So I will call the meeting to order. Um, and I will first raise the question that the clerk was uh, mentioning. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the, the clerk was uh, just raised a, a point that some of the people who had filed applications for requests for abatement had uh, told him that uh, they may not be attending. And so I will ask you, did, did they give any indication about whether they wanted us to proceed and, yeah. without them being present? That's correct, yeah. Okay. I think it's Clark and Ellison. Okay. There. Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I will then ask anybody who's here who's going to be testifying today, which means anyone requesting an abatement or providing information, to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Can I get everyone's name who just swore in? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Molly Jane Rose. What's the last name? K I N D hyphen G O D. Okay. Jennifer. Jennifer, here's a letter. I'm going to receive motion. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we got folks online. We, we did, and, and and we got uh, we got Steve. Can I ask who C. Tan is? It's Catherine Tan. Okay. Thank you. Joe Miles. And Joe Miles. And also the folks who to identify themselves remotely. Yep. Okay. And because this is a hybrid meeting, I'll ask all the members of the uh, board who are appearing remotely to identify themselves. I'm Carrie Brown. Mary Hooper. Tim Heaney. Adrian Gill. Okay. Great. Thank you. And is the next item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Are there any requested changes to the agenda? All right. We'll consider the agenda approved. And we have a set of uh, abatement hearings. And what the clerk suggested suggested to me uh, earlier today was that since we have uh, a small number of uh, abatement requests, we should just go ahead and um, act on them all as we as we go, rather than the way we did the previous round of just of stacking them all up to the end. So unless there's an objection, we'll do it that way. And first up, we have Wendy Burkhart. Why don't you come on up to the table? Hi. So I'm not really sure how to begin this. I mean, clearly I'm here because I have no money. <laughs> um, and that happened in the last three years due to a, just an avalanche of horrors. Um, the house that I own, I bought because it has an apartment that my mother could live in. She was getting dementia and we cut doors through so she'd have her space, but I could get there easily. And when she died, my daughter lived there for 10 years, and then I had to rent it out. I never wanted to be a landlord, and I sure still don't, because I've had some lovely tenants and some of the most horrible people I've ever met in my life, um, which 
all sort of happened in the last thirty years um, by not paying any rent. Just decided, even though they still had jobs, COVID said they didn't have to pay the rent, so they weren't going to. And I have had cancer twice and several heart attacks most recently, about five months ago. And I've just been horrendously sick for about 10 years. And I used to be an attorney. I'm, I'm still technically an attorney, but I haven't been able to, I, I worked part-time as much as I could from my home for a while. Um, I had, uh, you know, I got in this situation where people were saying, we won't pay you when we have the money. And then they'd move out of state and disappear. And, you know, there's electricity, there's heat, although I got fuel assistance, but I needed more than that. And um, I had to keep renting the apartment out because there are two furnaces and two oil tanks, and I can't afford to do both, nor will fuel assistance pay for an empty apartment. Um, and one of the things that has caused me, in addition to the cancer and the heart attack, I have a thing called trigeminal neuralgia, which I have a citation to from an NIH article that came out recently. If you'd like that, I also have a letter from my doctor that just kind of says that I have it and it's very, very painful. And most of the time it's on the surface of someone's face. If you touch it, it hurts incredibly. Mine is in my mouth. That's my trigger point. When I had chemo, I lost all my teeth. No, when I had radiation, I lost all my teeth. So I had the dentures. And they are now cracked, which is causing pressure on the, the trigger point. And I have to get new ones. You know, I'm, I, I can't do anything. Um, let me explain why I'm such a fast food case too. My daughter is right now in the ICU in Rutland and having surgery tomorrow morning on her lungs because she has MRSA pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And one lung is completely filled. So um, things are piling up. <laughs> Um, I also left my bottle of water in my car, so, um, I know it was, it was not the best idea to not pay any of the taxes. My thinking at the time was, if I pay a little bit, it's sort of aggravating, like, what's this? And it's not going to stop it from being late, it's not going to stop it from being, from getting penalties and interest and all that. And one of the people who didn't pay his rent kept telling me, he actually owes me $10,000 because I put up with this guy as long as I had credit and he kept saying he was gonna pay it. And then he disappeared. People have a way of moving out in the middle of the night. So, um, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you, please do anything you can for me for this situation. I will be able to pay the taxes once I'm out of this current situation. I have, I changed insurance, well, Medicare Advantage plan to cover as much of my denture, the new dentures that I need to get as possible. I've gotten an estimate from the dentist um, because they, they have to be a certain, like they have to sit perfectly because of the trigeminal neuralgia. Because they also sort of cover the trigger point, but don't touch it. So it's kind of a horror and, um, 
The estimate I've gotten is 4,500. It'll probably be more. My insurance will pay 3,000, but I have to pay the whole thing up front and get reimbursed. Um, and I have 3,000. I can give it to you or I can get my teeth fixed and, and you can help me in any way you can. I'll spend the rest of my life paying it back, but if penalties and interest keep accruing, you know, you can't ever get this stuff is, I went through this once, I, I, when I had both knees replaced about 10 years ago and my son-in-law took care of things for me, including me for the next year. Um, but I left him checks and deposit slips for everything because I was gonna be in a nursing home for six weeks after the surgery because I did both knees at once because I also have fibromyalgia and the surgeon said, don't do just one, you'll never come back. And he was right. Mm -hmm. um, so my son-in-law had this, I, I don't know what, he's a very intelligent guy. He went to the bank, deposited check, went to City Hall, paid the taxes, went back to the bank, looked at the balance on the ATM, and took out all the money because he just paid the taxes and here was all this money. So now I'm gonna go and go shopping. You know, like, and he realized later, you know, oh, that <laughs> makes no sense. But it was, it was too late at that point. He bought all sorts of groceries because my granddaughter was also living with me at that so, point. So Wendy, let me, it, it sounds like you're, you've been in a terrible position. And it's, what you're saying to us, what you said in your request for abatement is that if you, you do not have the current ability to pay all the back uh, taxes and, and interest and penalties, um, but uh, and I certainly can see why that would be the case, uh, but you do have income that's sufficient to pay. If you get that wiped up, you'll be able to be stay current on Absolutely. the- Absolutely. Okay, does any other member have any questions? Are you also looking to help with the water sewer? Because I see a water and sewer yes. bill. Yes, What is your <laughs> requested amount? Whatever it is, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I have, I have so many bills and forms. I also had two, my car was hit in parking lots when I wasn't anywhere near it twice in the last year. So I've got all these forms and things all over the place and I, and I thought I had everything organized and I have to let it from my doctor and it too. Um, so whatever amount it is. But you're looking for help with taxes and water. Right, so okay, right. The, one of the, the tenants who didn't pay the rent also didn't tell me that their toilet had been running for two months. So the city was kind enough to take a whole lot off that bill. And I paid that bill, I believe. Um, yeah, I paid that bill. But so according to what you've given us, your total unpaid water and sewer as of June as of June 15th is 2611 and 85 cents the people with the running toilet had this bright idea in the last year that I mean the last they were there for that a year lease and they stayed the whole time without paying anything and in the last month because the toilet was a month before they left the last month they just left faucets running so, I mean, seriously horrible people. Mm -hmm. Do any other members, Bob? Yes. <clears throat> Something you mentioned already that uh, you said you'll be able to pay this year's and you won't in the future, you'll mm -hmm. be able to pay. What, yes. What's changed? I have two new tenants from the tenants. apartment. Got young guys who are in very stable, well-paying jobs and they're really nice guys. They've been really helpful with me in the last few months. And... Yeah, because I'm, I'm just thinking, you, you've accounted for the fact that our taxes are probably going to be going up a little 
for this next year? That you have that into your ability? Well, I've also realized that I've reached the age where this is getting impossible, keeping the apart because one of the tenants ripped out every wire he could find, including the thermostat, and just, you know, that was another bazillion dollars to have everything fixed. And the last person punched holes in the walls, he's got, which these guys have agreed to fix. So I didn't even know they were there because I was so sick I hadn't gone in until I went to show them the apartment. And I was un just, I couldn't believe how it had been left. But um, so I have actually been talking to a couple of people who buy, you know, it, it is a two family house. Montpelier has quite a dearth of rental property and both apartments are three bedrooms each. So, you know, but it's an expensive neighborhood. And it's, it, it, they rent for a lot, um, they can. The other problem is that Vermont College tore down the beautiful carriage house that used to sort of provide like a very secluded, lovely little backyard on the rental side. They tore it down and built that horror that looks kind of like a dry cleaner. <laughs> and on my side of it, there's a big fan that blows like a jet engine right at the back porch and the master bedroom windows. And it beeps all night. So no one can open the windows in the summer or in the winter, but ever. You just, you know, you can't sleep with the windows open. <laughs> so it, that, that's been another problem. It's probably why I've had these horrible tenants because they can't get any other. I've also realized that References are utterly useless because people lie or they give you your friend, their friend's name. Are there any other uh, members that have any questions? So, so we, the total amount that, that's being requested is $8,298.58. Is that which is the handwritten total on the water and sewer uh, bill. There's a delinquent the, the taxes of Forty three ninety two, and then the May tax installment for the current year, twelve ninety three, and then the water and sewer delinquent. That's what it looks like. Twenty six eleven. So the the total. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would mean the next tax payment. Well, that's the, I guess that's the last the main the last next tax day in the August, yeah, 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 yeah. I can certainly pay. Okay. Just how how many units is just one apartment? Two. Okay. Well, yes, one apartment. I live on oh, the you inside. Live on the because you have tenants, so I wasn't sure. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. Um, Anyone have a motion to make for it? Yeah, uh, Carrie. Yeah, I, mean, I I didn't get the exact amount that was being requested. I know Sal said it a minute ago, but I would like to move that we abate the full amount of taxes and utility bills that are being requested. Is there a second? I'll yeah. second. Any uh, to abate in full the back taxes and uh, water and sewer uh, bills. In what amount? Eighty-two ninety-eight fifty-eight. I just have one question. Is you saying you're trying to sell the property? I, I'm. I mean, I'm so. I know I don't look very sick. I am actually. I, I'm never out of bed unless I'm going to a doctor's appointment. We're here. Um, so so moving is don't know. Okay. the most god awful thing I can think of. I can't even. Bend. I'm not. If I bend down, my blood pressure's going crazy, and we yeah. can't 
get medication right. So I pass out if I bend over. So my house is a disaster. But it, you know, it, if my daughter gets better, she will certainly help me with the whole situation. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you so much. Would you like the letter from my doctor? No, that's not wow. necessary. All right. Thank you thank, so thank much. You for coming. Bye. Bye. All right, Mary Alice Clark. Is that one of the people who said that she said she was likely not going to be there. Okay. Do you want to tell us what this is about? Or... Sorry, this is the agenda before, but could we bump the folks who aren't here till the end? And oh, then yeah. We can do the great. I think that's a great idea. And that's KC Ellison too, then, right? Yeah. And just make sure yeah. I keep my things in the correct order. Next up, FHS Holdings LLC. Good evening. I am Joe Miles, uh, the owner of RK Miles and the manager of FHS Holding, which is the holding company for uh, the property we operate on. Um, my request this evening is to uh, have our assessed value reduced due to the loss of approximately 24,000 square feet of building following a fire on November 1st. I don't have the data on how you assess the property. It doesn't say on the tax um, tax bill what the improvements are. <clears throat> it only gives me the total. So I'll have to rely on you to figure out how you assess. Those were warehouses versus it's not the store. It's the warehouses. So I'll leave that in your hands, but that's my request. Thank you. Um, I can speak to that. It's already been taken care of, but it will be um, as of April 1st of this year. You won't see it reflected on last year's assessment. Um, those buildings have all been removed. Um, I'm just trying to come up with what the new... You're going to get a change of appraisal notice in the mail that will give you the new value um, because we took off all of the buildings and... Um, added some depreciation to the outside of the structure because it also melted the siding on it. So I think the reduction in value is going to be around three hundred or three hundred twenty thousand dollars, if I remember. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, I can call you tomorrow with a definite. I mean, you're gonna, like I said, you're going to get a a change of appraisal notice anyway. Yeah, the notice is fine. Thank you. Okay. Now, to be clear, the uh, the 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 authority and the function of the board of abatement is to consider requests for abatement of property taxes, which is different from <coughs> changes in the the assessment, which is done by a, a different but very similar body, and. Uh, and so I gather that you're also requesting uh, to have the taxes abated from the date of the of fire and moving forward. Uh, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. So what percentage of the current value is the amount? What's the? So it's gonna, <clears throat> excuse me. It's going to be a little over three hundred thousand dollars. I don't have it in front of me. I, I wasn't expecting uh, that request. It's about. $320,000 off the total value. So off the total value, okay. 
which was seven. Seven, 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 seven. seven. Well, well, that's the new bill, right? Isn't the current year 296.8, if you look at the tax card? The, the, new, um, the new values haven't been set yet. Okay. And they have not been sent out. Does it look pretty convenient on the back of the tax card on the Patriot card? Um, it showed those buildings and it the total value of them was 296.8 on this card. Yeah, that's the, that, so that that two ninety six eight hundred. Those are for the yard items. So that's the storage sheds that had all the lumber in it, right? So that will be taken off your new value as of April 1, 2024, which gives you four eighty eight hundred. And then there was a little bit more depreciation added because of the siding that was melted. So I, I can't recall off the top of my head, but it might have been four hundred and seventy thousand dollars total. The new value? Yeah. Which will be as of April 1 of this year. So are we adjusting for next year, Marty, or are we doing the remaining seven months of this year after the property burned? Uh, that's just for this for this year going for April 1st. We set values as of April, April 1 of every year. Right. But the tax year is July 1, and it burned November 1, right? Yes. Right. So for the taxes, yes, we're looking at the eight months, right? Yep. Yep. November, yep. December plus uh, yeah. January yeah. through June. And Rosie, were you asking about the... I was just trying to do math and not... <laughs> not successfully doing it. So if somebody else can do it, I will make a motion. Well, the taxes would change if we lowered the value. So I think, I think the, so uh, the I, taxes would be based on that seven, the 776. I am interested in abating the value, the taxes on the value of the buildings for eight months. And the, I don't know how to calculate that. The ones that burned? Yes. So those... The value of those is that 296,800, which those were lost on November 1. So is it possible to compute what the taxes are? Sure. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Can we figure yeah. out what taxes would be on 296,800? But that's for the whole year. And it had. And then, one, yeah, then, then, we'll and then that for rate that the, by. Yep. Well, let's see. That's. Uh, the land and the buildings are different. Uh, yeah, I mean, can we just combine it in as a percentage of the, of both sets of buildings and the land? It can just be a percentage of that total. But I did. Just be or is the land to reduce? So, yeah. Yeah. About uh, according to your um, what you have said, it's about thirty nine percent of the total. 296 versus 480. So if you take that with the eight months, it's about $4,568, roughly. Yes. That's very close to what I came up with, too. Yeah. Um, quick math. Yeah. Somebody want to make a motion to that effect? I move that we abate $4,568. <laughs> and. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> okay. To be fair, somebody should check that math. <laughs> I actually did before I we got on the call. It. So yeah. Okay. All right. It's four thousand five hundred sixty-eight. Right. Everybody willing to go with that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Have a good night. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, House of Pain.
Is it this is Nam Chan? Yeah. Am I right? This is just a request for uh, personal property. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Should we move that one to the end because they're not here? Sure. Rabble Rouser. Anybody here from Rabble Rouser? Did we approve, Sean? What happened to the house? Um, Rosie suggested we move it to the end. Oh, yeah. And I think that maybe we'll isn't she it. here via um, Zoom? Oh. No. Can you read what that says there, John? It's Catherine Tan. Okay. Um, RSA. Okay. Okay. Well, wanted to talk the abatement on the. District E for 15 State Street. And are we doing an RSA now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing is the District E didn't function this winter. It's in Barrage. Um, and um, we didn't heat as much space as normal because uh, not only does the flood wash away our sheet rock and our carpet, but it washed our tenant away too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we didn't heat the uh, first floor to any more than uh, about 50 degrees on winter. Um, this year, this heating season, I should say, the one that just ended, um, <clears throat> and we're comparing it to the previous year. I had heard it one time that the meters weren't working, so they couldn't read the amount of BTUs we were using, and that they were just gonna bill us what they did the year before. Um, it makes that a little difficult to tell because the dates don't line up exactly as they did before. We never received the first bill, for district heats until January 31st of uh, 2024, this year. And that was for October, November, December, January. Um, so our total district heat bill uh, for October through March was $12,501. And the previous year, it was $10,835. But um, because the pumps weren't working, um, that the only heat we did receive was whatever heat came by convection by the hot water circulates itself as it heats. So we did get some heat, but we had to supplement the parts of the building that were being rented with electric heat. So that made our electric bill for the same period $7,900 for this year compared to $3,700 at the prior year. So it went up $4,191, which is 113%. Now, because you can't tell what electric is for the heat, and what's for lights and computers, et cetera, um, that includes uh, all of it. But like I say, the first floor was empty, so they weren't using any lights and they weren't using any uh, computers and stuff down there. And that still as of today is empty. Um, the other spaces we were able to get some of them leased up by January 1st, 
and another one on February 1st. Um, so we did heat those with electric. So what we're looking to do is have our charges abated for the year. In full or in part or? Well, in full would be great. <laughs> it, it really, it, they, there's a pump that circulates all the water and that did not run this winter at all. First of all, the new pump was, wasn't installed until the 3rd of February. But even after that's installed, it needs um, another company to come down and um, hook up to a computer like or electronic to run it. And we don't want to install that in a cellar as it was, we want to put that on the first floor and they didn't have time in their schedule to, to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, has it been installed now? It still has not. It, we're going to do it this summer. Uh -huh. is, is the pump down in the basement too? The is pump it, is in the basement. And it, is that okay to be in the basement? That has to be, they, they, they okay. tell me. Because that's where the water line comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all that circulation is the response, that's your responsibility as the landowner, not the city. I just don't understand how district heat works that well. I don't either. It's, <laughs> um, no. That's not part of the city's system. The, you're the one who's who's covering the cost to get that replacement, not the city. Right. Okay. right. So, uh, uh, Steve, what you? What accounts for the $1,700 difference in this year's district versus last year's, the 12 5 versus the 10 8? 8, 835. I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't just know. Just the change in the rate or a, a, the rate or the BTUs. Because there was no measurement on usage. That was my understanding that the meters didn't work. So, but so you don't you, maybe it's the same, the same uh, usage and not apply the new rate to it. So don't I don't understand fully how district heat works either, but don't you pay you pay sort of a basic charge and then you pay a usage charge, kind of like water and sewer, right? Uh, Is that the way it works? Uh, energy usage and uh, capacity charge. Mm -hmm. Two separate charges. So what is the what is the capacity charge for this year and last year? Do you have that? I'd have to break it out. Mm. It's in that total. But for example, in October of 22, the energy use charge was for October was $482. The, it was $438 for uh, 23, but it does say estimated energy usage. So that's why I think it wasn't a real reason. The capacity charge in October of 22 was $826, yet this past October was $1,044. The MMBTU charge changes from year to year, so that would be the, the rate increasing. Bob, you had a question. Yeah, I was just wondering if someone here could explain how the, the whole system on the district heat works for charging. Is there, I guess we're talking about capacity, but do they measure the use? And is he still, is, is the heat still going there, but he has no way of pumping it to the units? Or You know, we got that memo from Sarah, yeah. but, but I think we might want to, Ask her to come in and explain it. Ask her or somebody to come in and explain it. Maybe someone from. We are going to have to have another meeting because we've got a couple folks we could squeeze in. Why don't we do that? Because it seems like none of us here understands enough about this to know what the right way to resolve this is. Does anyone object to that? 
Okay, let's do that. Let's table that to, to our next meeting. Okay. Sorry to make you sit through this, only the... Do we have other questions to receive or can we just talk to Sarah in the next meeting and make it the same? Saving yeah, I don't know what the other questions would be. Steve, just to make sure that the $4,200 for electricity was your total heating bill. That for, was the difference. That was the difference. Right. Our heating bill. Uh, oh, that's right. It was six months. The prior year was 3719 and, and this, this past October till this March was seventy nine, yeah. seventy nine sixty, <laughs> uh, seventy nine hundred, seventy nine hundred. So it's about a four thousand one hundred ninety one dollar difference. Yeah. That that's between which period of time? October to March. Okay, but the other number you were giving us was between March and October. No, okay. no. Uh, uh, the lower saying? number on yeah. electric is October 22 okay. through March 23, and then the higher ones, October 23 through March 24. Thank you. Thank you. Like I say, it may be a day or two off that I'm always reading the same, mm -hmm. same days. And the only other thing I wanted to add that we had about uh, the total building um, this. 8,600 feet per October, November, and December, about 6,000 feet of that was vacant um, since the first of the year. We've leased up um, all about 2,400. And that this was a warmer winter than previous winters. So the heat bill, if if they were measured, they probably would have measured less mm -hmm. instead of this estimate. And they just estimated it based on last year's usage. Okay, well, you may wind up selling back anyway. Okay. But this is helpful. Okay. Mary, Thank do you, you want... Two questions. I I wonder if it makes sense to ask Steve to sit down with somebody in the finance department and work out kind of the particulars of this rather than uh, and, and come back to us with a proposal for what should be abated rather than us trying to think of the questions for Sarah or for whomever it's appropriate. I mean, maybe that, so I'm throwing that out. And a second question I have is, was the disruption of the service all on a burden of the city or the property owner, or does the state have some liability here? And should, and I'm sorry, folks, I may be making this complicated, but Maybe the state owes us something, or there is an expense that they should be bearing or not charging us for. And I, I, I'm sure that's a very complicated conversation, but they're partners in this, and I'm not sure we should own it all. Yeah, I think you have some thoughts about that. Jack? Just. If it's okay, can I follow Mary's thought? Yes. Okay. Um, so I do have a building on district heat, so I'm a little familiar with it. And I've also read that contract and I think the state's got it. I mean, you can read it, but it's, they really weren't keen on getting into this whole adventure in the first place. And they've got themselves pretty well cleared of any responsibility on the Montpelier loop. Um, if you read that agreement, I, I'd be surprised if there's any partnership there for a cost and I but I do like your idea of sitting having Steve work through with Sarah because he's got a number of factors here that that aren't just district heat he's got his electric bills he's got other factors that we're not going to be able to sort um, as well as he can work through with Sarah 
and some of it is his responsibility. There's some equipment he should replace or should have replaced in some parts of the city. So they can work that through. So the, uh, we'll talk to Sarah. Maybe, maybe you'll come up with a resolution that is acceptable to you. Maybe you'll wind up being back here. Can I, Rosie, yeah. I mean, I read Sarah's memo and she's basically saying that they did have customer meetings and told the customers all to come to the board of abatement. Oh. So I, I don't want to send people in circles here. If city staff is thinking that it's really our responsibility to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. okay. I, I I I didn't notice that when I read the memo, but yeah. it's it kind of at the end. Um, she says the city held customer meetings and provided customers with a link to the board of abatement section of our website and emailed them the form directly. While the abatement form references taxes, it can also be used for water, sewer, district heat, or other customer fees. We recognize that each owner and building have unique circumstances, so adjusting these issues through the Board of Abatement provides for an opportunity for each owner to explain their situation and request an adjustment. We may disagree, <laughs> right. but <laughs> that's... Well, okay, yeah, Mary, it looks like you're still on it. We can still, yes, they appropriately, she appropriately informed Steve they should come to us for this, but we can seek guidance from her on what the proper amount in the city's view should be abated, if any. And if they're if if they can't agree, then it's up to us to resolve it. But this is is above my pay grade in in trying to figure out. It's it's kind of complicated. So it I think it's worth giving it a shot. And we may wind up wind making the decision anyway. Okay, Bob. Well, the other taxpayers in the same situation from the district that we're looking at, and will they give us something consistent to work with? Well, that's a good question. I haven't, uh, I haven't heard anyone else come to the city council saying, "Hey, we got really no. damaged by the." district heat thing, which you would think we would have. Somebody else brought it up in one of the hearings this winter. It's one of the flood ones. I don't know if they requested it, but they okay. it did get brought up. But I don't, I don't remember, remember what we did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we did anything about it. I think that's just brought up. OK, well, we'll this so will come I will hear from somebody. <laughs> or do I contact Sarah? Contact Sarah. Okay. Yeah. I'll let her know you're going to call. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Shippy family eye care. Please. It was a little. Hard for me to figure out where. Here we are. Hi. Hi. So I live in um, one of the apartments above Shippy Family Eye Care in Unit 202. It's one of three units up there. We received a water bill, a utility bill, after the flood had occurred for the quarter of July through September. Um, for uh, just over $1,800. Um, during the, obviously the flood was the 10th or 11th, it's all kind of blurry now. After the flood happened, um, my family and I left the apartment. Um, it was not really able to be lived in at all. Um, and we were gone for the entire month of July. We lived in Waitsfield at the time or North Basin at the time, and then secured housing in St. Johnsbury for the month of August. So we were not living in the apartment at all for half of July, for majority of July, all of August. And then we moved back in um, September 1st. So the initial water bill, this is Sarah Clark. She's our property manager. Um, so she's been working with the water Serena there. Um, we've been trying to get it. We were wondering why it was $1,800 when we weren't there at all. 
Um, and we've been, they've been, I guess, trying to work out a new amount and it's been kind of changing every time. And I think it's kind of settled around between like around $450, but even still, that's not even, that's at least double what our average water is at this moment. So we're requesting an abatement of that quarter, or I'm more than happy to pay for the month of September or if, when, when we were actually living there. And is the issue that there was some, that the flooding, you know, caused the uh, water here to tip over or something and caused it to- We do believe that the, the water tank flipped over, um, but that was replaced on July 21st by Connor Contracting. So July 21st through then it was fixed and it still ran. We, we don't really know. Dollars. We've been trying to figure out why we don't know why. And it's specifically just linked to our unit, which was. So there weird. were other two other units. Nothing happened to those water tanks and our bills were normal up there. And, and all the units have are separately metered for water. Separately metered. Yep. And the other two units, those tenants were also not living there at the time. So. Yeah, and their bills reflect what, what it should. So you're all in the same position, not present, not using water, but for some reason. My specific unit of the three, this was charged a very large, <laughs> almost just under two grand. Bob, are the, are the bills? They, do they go to you or they go to the owner of the building? They go to us, yeah. but we there was something with the mail and all that stuff. We didn't get them for a while. So we didn't end up getting it until like almost six months late. Like you're, look, I don't even remember. Yeah. It's all over. So I also, I have documentation of every interaction I've had with Serena, Bev, and Sarah. Um, and every time I've asked for a new balance for Molly's bill, it's always different. Um, they continue to add penalties to it even after we applied to come here to the abatement. Um, but they never had a set amount of what we owed. They continued to change the balance on that. Just so you know, those there's nothing to stop the penalties from mm -hmm. continuing to pile up, which is why you got different numbers mm -hmm. each time. Okay. I'm somewhat aware of the interactions you all have with mm -hmm. them on that and they were working from the same numbers mm -hmm. so do you know anything more about this than you... i can't tell you any more about it other than the the basic offer has been made i don't have a word out there's a there's a one-off that the city can offer um i don't know charlotte can you speak to that i i don't I know that they come up with it. So it was so the much. average average of the billing cycle for the past four years, and then they adjust that down two and a half times the average. Yeah. However, she's only lived there for since December of 2022. So those previous years were not her average. They were based off of the other tenant that lived there. Is that the, the negative flood the adjustment comes on the bill? Yes, I believe it is. Question, another question. Yeah, but so when you move out, the city just continues to have your name on this bill. The well, city we doesn't just, stop it. She was still we it just was deemed unsafe to live there after right. the yeah. flood. So she still off she still had the apartment. She was still renting. Yeah, still like renting and oh. everything. I just, we were not actually off. They were just, so we were just. Re received any water or sewage at all during that period? No, we weren't. In, no one was in the apartment at all during that time. They charged you up to the end of your lease. Is that what it is? They charged her for that quarter where she was only there for a month, not three. Okay. Plus some um, because of the damage to the water tank.
Anyone else have any questions? I would just like clarity on the amount you're asking to be debated. So I see that you've calculated the average, is it the average monthly payments? 175 so, or is that the average? I think the account balance as of right now, I believe it's 402.56, $402.56. We'd like to abate that. However, or are you willing to pay yeah, one month? The month that I was there, when that would make sense with the water usage that we were occupying the apartment. We were only, for that quarter, we were only there for the month of September. So ideally, if we, her average quarterly bill is $175.70, she'd pay one third of that. So whatever one third is. Yes, yeah, thanks. Um, so I remember from previous meetings where we've discussed similar issues that the city does have a policy about what happens when there's a water leak and, and a policy of giving folks a break. And it's my understanding that that policy was followed in this case. Is that right? And so there was an, an offer made of a really significant decrease on the bill um and i am in in the past we have um generally not made exceptions to that unless there were some sort of really extenuating circumstances and so i'm i'm inclined to follow our policy in this case and you know reduce the amount by whatever the calculation came out to be but not any further than that I would just like to say, again, the water tank was replaced on July 21st. So again, there shouldn't have been additional charges or we're feeling like she shouldn't have to pay July 21st through September 1st when she was not living there. We can add in that she was also pregnant and has a newborn right now. So it's just financially, she also had to pay rent in St. Johnsbury while she was also paying rent to live to not live here right now at that time. And have they done anything? Have they replaced the meter or tested the meter or done anything like that? Yep, everything was done on, on the 21st of July. Rosie. I thought that I wanted to have dated somebody who had an issue where the tanks had, the water tank had disconnected and the basement had flooded. And I'm sort of wondering if that's what's going on here is that this increase is because of a huge amount of water between the flood and when the tank was replaced. And that would align with what we heard on, I think, another situation. So yeah, I, uh, I thought I remember that we did a baby. That was So because of that, I would be comfortable abating some amount. Um, yeah, as I recall, Paul's situation was that the water heater was knocked over and so and it was dis disconnected the water line to the water heater and so water was just gushing into the basement of the building for some number of days uh, carrie yeah I, what i'm remembering about that last case was that the property owner contacted the city because the city needed to turn it off at the city connection and the city did not come immediately. And so in that case, we granted an exception to the current policy that gives a discount because it really seemed to be the city's fault. I'm not seeing that in this case. I'm seeing that the, I don't know why the water bill was so high, but I, it doesn't sound like the property owner is contending that the bill is a mistake. It sounds like the water was used and we have a policy when there's a water leak of significantly reducing it. And we applied that in this case. And I so I don't feel comfortable making it an additional exception and reducing it beyond that. Okay. Any other thoughts? Sorry to ask a question. No, it's okay. But they were you were saying that nothing changed with the other requirements? Correct. Yeah. And but everybody has their own meter. Is yes. that what it is? So it would, didn't make sense why my specific apartment was the one that was charged so much when we weren't 
living there. I mean, we just went through the flood. We, we had no place to go. We had, we had a, I had a one-year-old at the time. I was pregnant. And then I get this like huge water bill when I wasn't even living there. And it was just kind of, so on top of paying two rents. And so we've been trying to work since then. This has been what, six months trying to get it lower and they've got it lower, which is I'm very grateful for, but it's still double what my normal amount is that I pay. And I wasn't even there for two months or a month. And a half, I, say. I think that's the policy. Is the policy calculation is yeah, twice but, the average. Right, but that was that penalty was based on some type of water leakage, right? Uh, it, yeah, is this so leakage or we, based, but based on a you know a, 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 an anomalous increase in water usage? Well, that, I, like somebody doesn't discover a running toilet for right. two months or something, and they say, "Hey, you know, my bills would be this, this, Is any of that pertinent here? I mean, did that happen? Yeah, that's, I, so that's that I what I'm trying to. That's, me, I don't know that yet. Let me jump in. You, you were, you guys were in there working on the, uh, on the building to get it uh, rehabbed for to reopen the business at, at, the at that time, right? Some period of time. And was there water running in the building that you? No, I mean Connor Contracting was there the day after the flood, and they shut everything off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I came into your business the day or two days after the flood. And, yeah. and you were one of the businesses where you already had your uh, utilities up above flood level. Mm -hmm. So the apartments are above? Yeah, so the there's apartment. the practice and then the apartments are above it. And is there any chance that your apartment is on the business's water line? I don't, I no. have no idea. We, I don't think we so. Have four separate bills. Four separate bills. It's a mystery. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion of any kind? But, but so what you're thinking is that there was no water. There should have been, and there was no water flowing into your apartment during those roughly two months that you were not physically present in the apartment. Yeah, no one was there. No, there's a, sorry. Go ahead. There, there's a base charge to even if you're not getting water, right? Mm -hmm. Is there for water? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. I mean, even if you're not getting it, during those two months, there's still a charge, but not a usage charge. I see, so I don't know what those numbers would be. Well, I would entertain the motion to either grant some level of abatement or to deny it, and then we'll have a vote either way. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I need to know what the what the current bill is. It's not eighteen something. It's, no, it's something less. It's four hundred and two and fifty six cents. Four hundred two and fifty six, and you and you're saying that that was calculated by water and sewer based on their policy. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. the, the the double the average or whatever it is. Her average that's is one hundred and seventy five dollars and seventy cents. And what you think you should be paying is one third of that hundred seventy five. Yes. So I'll make a motion to abate the amount owed for that quarter down to uh, fifty nine dollars. Which is one third of fifty nine dollars. Fifty nine dollars. I made it down to fifty nine dollars for that quarter. Second. Okay. How much actually is the same about the cal calculator? And the amount that your current charge is is how much? Uh, or up to fifty six. $402. So 40256 minus 59 would get, get us the amount of the abatement. 343.56. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry to sound like a broken record on this, but um, this feels deeply inequitable if we were to pass this to other people who have had water leaks, other people who had um, water leaks due to the flood and had their their bills adjusted according to the standard policy that we apply equitably unless there is some compelling reason not to. I don't see a compelling reason not to use our policy here. If we grant an exception, it feels capricious and without basis. And so I'm going to vote no. Do I ask another question? Yeah. Did you uh, read the meter? I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I left the day after the flood and I didn't Have you so. never have you ever read it since since this occurred? I don't know. I don't know. And did the city provide a meter reading? Every bill after has been has made sense. So I because my bill is estimated every month. It's not based on an actual reading because my meter has never been accurate it's mm -hmm. never got the you know it's never send it signal out automatically mm -hmm. so it's it's an sure. I, I want to say it did because i have an email in here from bev and she was able to read the meter or we had the meter read when a tenant moved out and then when a new tenant moved into another apartment. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to change the bill and adjust correctly for who owed what. Um, that was... Anyone else have anything to say about this? So I would just like to know the reason that I think this is different from a normal water leak is that it's not clear that this was a water leak, that there's an unexplained amount on the meter that's we don't know where the water went so that's why i would be comfortable with this okay Any, anybody else have anything to say <laughs> sorry we don't know where the water went sounds like a leak but the, it doesn't <laughs> it it's not clear that water was used um based on what's been uh discussed Okay, I think we are going to clearly to have uh, a non-unanimous decision, so I'm going to uh, do it by roll call. John, abstaining? Yes. Are you both? Sarah? Yes. The motion is to abate all but $59, and the $59 is essentially one third of uh, a normal uh, quarters use for for that apartment. Okay. Um, Sal? No. Bob? Yes. 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 And on the video, Adrian? Yes. Carrie? No. Mary? Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's passed. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. Okay. And I think we're up to Catherine Tan. Hi, everyone. Thank you um, for your patience. Thank you for uh, adding me to tonight's uh, meeting. Um, um, I'm here requesting an abatement post uh, the flood. I think I sent in my application. Um, the house at 309 State Street was, uh, I guess the whole basement was flooded and um, the first floor partially uh, for all three units. So um, it's currently not livable. So that's why I'm requesting, I'm trying to get the house back <laughs> into shape, but everything had to be taken out. And is your a property that, uh, are, are you going to be uh, 
are you target for either an, uh, a buyout or an elevation? I'm trying to elevate the house because I want to save it if it's possible, but it's going to take me quite, it's going to take me a little time and I'm going to try to do this in steps. So, um, you know, hopefully at some point sooner rather than later, if I could just get one unit back up, that would be uh, what I'm trying to do for now. Um, because it's, you know, I'm told that, uh, you know, this property will likely flood again if there's another, uh, you know, situation. So I'm hoping to elevate it so that we can avoid that going forward. And I see you have a determination of substantial damage from the city. Yes. Um, now, this is one of those where we go through our list of questions, right? Or, uh, no, or we just... Yeah, although it's substantially damaged. We so we just granted it. it. Yeah. We missed the state deadline to get money back, right? No, we didn't. We didn't? Yeah. Oh, because it's, it's, it's November. We thought we were trying to rush to get it all done by April, and they, what they passed was November. Well, that's finished. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So, is there a motion to fully abate school and uh, municipal taxes? So moved. And this is for the re for the entire uh, tax year. So, from July tenth to uh, the end of uh, June thirtieth. That's what we did for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'll say. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Your Thank abatement. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Sorry, I've never done this this before. Does that mean I can leave? <laughs> you. Oh yeah. You you can you can leave the Thank request you. the relief you requested has been granted and you will be getting uh, a notification from the city clerk. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great evening. You too. All right. Now to go back to the people who were not here, starting with. Mary Alice Clark. So she did not provide any more information than, than she provided. So basically that means that you all know about as much as I do. This is a uh, this basement is the issue. Um, there is an allusion to ability to pay in the marriage, which is not checked off. I mean, maybe we should have made it clear you can check off more than one. Um, there's no reason not to, um, as far as, you know, the statutory reason to, to apply. Um, I mean, I know we generally have not done basements, but I think you, the question of ability to pay might complicate that a little bit. And can we tell, was this from the July flood or was this from some other time? Do we even know? The standing is in this way. Love. Ask Sarah to be sure. Would it be appropriate for us? I would I would be interested in making it a notion a motion to deny it based on what's been presented, but to invite her to come back if there is an inability to pay and present based on that. Reapply mm -hmm. on that basis if that's yeah. Is there a second? Yeah, I agree. There's just not we don't have enough information to even know. And if it's if it's basement, we've been denying. So. Tim, were you seconding that? Second. Yes. Oh, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
Any opposed? Okay. And we have Casey Ellison. Another one where we don't really have any information. And this one also suggests a loss of income, but doesn't specify. And this is also just a basement. Yeah. Is it? Oh, I see. This is where Carol's office used to be. Okay. Uh, Does anybody have any thoughts about this? Yeah. There's only about four pages that were submitted, including the property card and the bill. It, yeah, Tim. It seems to be fair. I mean, we haven't ever done this based on loss of income so that throws that out um the fact that she didn't carry flood insurance was her mistake but um and, and she didn't address how long they weren't able to use the building so in terms of because in, in the past we've said okay if you couldn't use it for three months we would rebate the part that you couldn't rent for that period but we don't have any of that information So do we yeah, do the I don't same think... thing here, deny it, go back and encourage her to provide more information or just? This is already her second time and she's not shown up either time. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, but she submitted it back in March and never <laughs> came before, which is why we put her off to now. So yeah. So Tim, your motion is to deny it? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. And we have House of Kang. And this is a personal property tax abatement. $89.48. There's something odd about this one. You take a look at it. Yes. That's my question. I didn't think this building was impacted by the flood. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. It, it, they don't say that they lost personal property. It, it was flooded. Was it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, what threw me was the request was for ninety six fifty one, and the tax bill is eighty nine forty eight. I'm oh. gonna. <laughs> um, I'm. I should have spotted this before and asked the question, but I'm gonna take a educated guess and say that that's accumulated penalties from not paying and maybe yeah. a misunderstanding that those penalties will just go away if they're complete it's abated. That's what I'm guessing. Charlotte, does that sound reasonable? Well, I was just going to say on their application, they put this parcel on rest of 800 million. Yeah. No, that's that's correct. I'm just looking at the um, the difference in the amounts there. But I bet you anything that's it. I bet that's the way it is. How did we do other personal property? We asked them when they replaced it. And that's when we like we baited a quarter if it had taken them a quarter to replace it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that how we so mm -hmm. yeah, the personal property is eighty million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. 
that they're asking for 96. Oh, probably the penalties on it. Yeah. That was so large. Yeah. Yep. Did anybody know when they reopened? I have no idea. When House of Tang reopened? So I think, does it say we closed for two months, opening back in October? I know they were open by winter. So if we were to bait anything, maybe it would just be the two October, November things. Okay. Is that a motion? No. Abate the uh, 40. I want to Okay, is there a second? So motion, motion by Marty, second by somebody. Bob. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And rabble rouser. Well, I, I have a feeling we're going to get more here from Bev on this one. Again. Yeah. They're closed for two months, and this is a property, personal property only. Yeah, they have. I've got their. Detail here, but I've paid some of the. Okay. Based on the two months, we could do one quarter, or we could. <laughs> one quarter is a good idea. Yeah, so 45 42. Okay, so Rosie, you're moving abating sure. 45 42. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? So they're closed. Does that affect this? There's going to be more coming. Probably. Well, I think what well, it doesn't affect this, but uh, you know, in, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if they're permanently closed. If we'll be hearing uh, from from Dev uh, coming to us with a with a request to abate everything else that they are. But, but that's not before us tonight. So, so the motion is to abate uh, one quarter's worth. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we are done. We are adjourned as of, or yeah, I guess we can say we're adjourned as of seven fifty-three, seven fifty-four.